press enter, and now we get 160 because we have a total of 60 from category B here and 100 from category B here. Thanks, pass me. Now, that was a good intro to sumifs. Another function that's very similar to sumifs is countifs. Now, we're going to take a look in this video with both countifs and sumifs using a little bit of numerical information, logical operators, and we're going to take a look at some errors. So let's start off with equals countif. Now you can use countif or countifs if you're using just one criterion. It'll work exactly the same. So just like last time, we'll start off using some words. So the range, let's go with uh, D2 to D, and we're going to count how many of them are the word T. We can see here that 329 values are T. How about if it was coffee? We can see 119 are coffee, and the last one is hot chocolate. We get six hot chocolate. Now, changing the words each time is a little bit of a pain, so what we can do is we can use a reference formula. So let's select the beverage here. Let's say hot chocolate. And what we should find if we change the word hot chocolate to the number K1, we should get six hot chocolates. If we were to change this to coffee, we get 119. And if we were to change it to tea, we get 329, as expected, just like we had before. Now let's see what happens if we try a sum ifs formula. So we'll take our sum ifs. It gives us the sum range first. It's asking, what do we count first? Or what do we sum first? So the sum range is going to be the total number of bins. We'll select the first few and press backspace to give us the whole range. And then comma, the criteria range will be this section here, column D, press backspace to give us the whole um, column, and then T in quotation marks. And that gives us the total number of bins for T. Again, just like before, let's take this away and reference K1, 4786, just like we had before. And we can then change this to anything else within that list, coffee or hot chocolate. Of course, we could use a drop down menu, but just for this, uh, we will just stick to the basics. Now, let's say that we want to count how many of these entries have a total bin number of 10 or higher. So over here, we'll start off with count if. The range will be the total number of bins. I'm just going to select the first few and backspace and the criteria. Let's start off with the number 10. We can just type the number 10 because it is a number and it's looking for a number. We press enter and the total number of entries here that have 10 written in this column is 11. So let's say we now want to know how many of these entries have 10 or more. Let's enter back in the cell and this is called a logical operator. To use logical operators, we start with double quotation marks and then the logical operator of your choice. And then we close with double quotation marks. Now these logical operators work exactly how, as how you learned them in early high school. This one here is saying greater than 10 because 10 here is on the small side. So everything we want is on the greater side, on the large side. Press enter and we get 248 entries that have a total bin count of more than 10. Now this doesn't include the number 10. So if we want to include that, we can include that into our logical operator, giving us 259 uh, number of entries with 10 plus bins. So now that we know how logical operators work, we can use that information to work out how many bins were collected between two dates. But before we do that, if this information has been helpful to you, please leave a like and let us know down in the comments how this has been helpful. So let's say that we want to know how many bins were collected between the 15th of December 2022 and the 15th of January 2023. Now, if the dates look a bit weird to you, that's OK. Just set it for your locality and it should work perfectly fine. Uh, however, if I try to type it the other way around, December 15, 2022, you can see that it's left justified, meaning it's recognizing this as a text and not a date. So be careful when entering dates. So let's use countifs to work out how many entries were created between these two dates. So first, the range. We want to select the date range, which is A2 to A. And then the criterion will be, in quotation marks, greater than or equal to to close quotation marks and an ampersand. Then we get to go over here and click on the date that we want, which is 15th of December. And this will tell us the total number of entries made from the 15th of December onwards, but we want to end this at the 15th of January. So let's put another comma. Criteria range two, again, it's gonna be the same date range. So we'll come over here, select the date range, press a comma, and then just like before, but flipped, we want less than 
or equal to, put an ampersand and then click on the 15th of January and press enter. So between these two dates, 15th of December and 15th of January, including those dates, we have 288 entries. If we want to know the total number of bins between these two dates, it's pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is we're going to use sum ifs and we now start off with our sum range. So the sum range will be the total number of bins. We'll select that first. And then the criteria range will be the dates. So we'll select the date column, type within double quotation marks, greater than or equal to, and an ampersand to connect this to the first date here. So we can see from the 15th of December, we have this many bins, but we want to end it at the 15th of January. So we'll put a comma, another date range. I'm just gonna type it in. And then with after the comma, less than or equal to, with an ampersand, the 15th of January. Press enter and we get 4,285 bins within those two dates. So let's tidy this up and we'll move on to the next step. From here, what I want to do is filter this even further so that we're only adding together the total number of bins and we're checking the total number of entries based on a driver. So let's put in here a third column, we'll call this driver. And for this, let's use a drop down, just like we've seen many times before. We'll go drop down from a range and we'll be selecting the driver range. C2 to C5, select all of them. That gives us all of our drivers. And we'll head back over and we can now select our driver. Let's go with Devon Fritz. So these number of entries, we're going to add an extra bit of information saying we want to include the driver. So in this case, if we enter the entries, we have our count ifs just like we had before. It's been filtered by dates and we want to include the driver criterion. So we'll select the driver list first, press backspace, and then over here, we'll select Devon's name from this list. Press enter and we can see that Devon collected out of the total 288, he collected uh, or made 64 entries. We can do the same for the sum ifs, but in this case, I'm gonna make a little error to see how we can deal with that. So now our criteria range, just like before with our count ifs, will be the driver name. We'll just select the drivers here and then put a comma and the criterion will be just like before, the driver's name. We'll click enter on that and we can see we get a value error. Now, if we mouse over or select that cell, it tells us what the error is and how to fix it. So let's mouse over that. And it says array arguments to some ifs are of different size. So that tells us when we enter the formula, we need to check the array sizes. So we have H2 to H, A2 to A, A2 to A and C2 to C191. So this is the error here. Let's backspace on that. And now it gives us the total number of bins that Devon Fritz collected between 15th of December and the 15th of January. If you want to change those dates, you can just double click on the date here and select a new date. For the next part, let's say that we have part of a word we want to search for. For this, we'll use wildcards. Now in Google Sheets, we have two different wildcards. One of them is for searching for many characters and the other is for searching just one character. In this instance, we'll search for many characters. So we'll enter the cell. Let's get rid of the uh, driver and we'll search for a new flavor. So back here, we have flavors in column E. So we'll select column E and then we'll put a comma and then we'll use the word salt. Now, if we just use the word salt, we end up with zero entries, but instead of salt, we'll put a star at the end of the word salt. Press enter and it gives us 16 results. That's saying that there are 16 entries within the flavor column that start with the word salt. And if we look at the data, we'll go across here, right down the bottom, we can see we have salted cam caramel and we've got salty hot chocolate. So we'll head back to the data here. And I know that there's also a um, salty tea in here, but the salty tea has phrases before it. So if we put a star at the start, we get 17 entries. So if we search, we get, there it is, this tea with salt. So that's now added that to our count. Anything with the word salt in it is now being counted. For the number of bins, we can do the exact same thing. Let's get rid of the driver and we will say E2 to E because that's where the flavors are. And then we want to search for salt and we get 198 bins. 
The other option is to use a question mark. So if we change this here to a question mark at the end, this is saying we're now looking for many characters before the word salt and only one character after the word salt. So that gives us a total of zero for the number of bins and zero for the total entries. But if we go back to our data and let's say that uh, something has changed here, we'll go green tea salty. We should now have 40 bins and one entry. And there it is, 40 and one. But what happens if we know in our data there is a star or a question mark that we want to search for? Well, to do that, we'll use the tilde key. Now, the first thing I need to do is just change these dates. So they're a bit in the future, so we can actually find what we're after. If we look in the data here, we can see that we have some green tea that was collected on the 23rd of January that have stars on them. So to search for those stars, we can go up to our formula and we'll start with a star because that's saying anything before the star and including the star. So this is saying anything before a star and this is saying including the star. Now that tilde key is if you hold shift and press the button next to one. And in the same way for some ifs, we'll use a star and then the tilde key and then another star. And that tells us how many bins were collected that have a star in it. So if we look over here, these two I know are the only two, and if we add them up, we get 3 and 12, which is 15. So to recap, we've covered things like countif, countifs, sumifs, sumifs, how to calculate between dates, how to calculate using names and numerical values, including logical tests, and wildcards, and including some errors in the, in the process. And if this has been helpful, please give us a like, and I'll see you next time.